After performing hand hygiene and ensuring privacy, introduce yourself to the patient. Then identify the patient using two identifiers. Hi, Mr. Davis. I'm Nikki and I'm gonna be your nurse. All right. First off, I wanna take a look at your hospital ID bracelet, okay? All right. All right, can you tell me your name and date of birth? Bill Davis, December 25th, 1929. To take right. the apical pulse, right, begin Are by assessing for day. factors that can affect its well. rate and rhythm, such as medical history, okay. disease, we'll processes, that, age, right. exercise, right position that. changes, medications, temperature, no. and sympathetic okay. stimulation. Okay, well, we're gonna get started. I'm gonna take a listen to your heart rate, okay? All right. So Clean gloves are worn only when the nurse may be in contact okay, with bodily fluids or the patient is in protective precautions. Help the patient into a supine or sitting position and expose his sternum and the left side of his chest. Now, locate the point of maximal impulse, or PMI, also known as the apical impulse. First, find the angle of Lewis, a bony prominence just below the suprasternal notch. Slide your fingers down each side of the angle to find the second intercostal space, or ICS. Then carefully move your fingers down the left side of the sternum to the fifth intercostal space and over to the left midclavicular line. When you've found the right spot, you'll feel the PMI as a light tap, about one to two centimeters in diameter, marking the apex of the heart. If the PMI is not where you expect it to be, as in a patient with an enlarged left ventricle, inch your fingers along the fifth intercostal space until you feel the PMI. Remember its location over the apex of the heart in the fifth intercostal space at the left midclavicular line. Okay, now that I've found the spot, I'm going to go ahead and take a listen with my stethoscope here, okay? Next, warm the diaphragm of the stethoscope in the palm of your hand for 5 to 10 seconds. Then, clean it with alcohol and allow it to dry for 30 seconds. Place the warmed diaphragm of the stethoscope over the PMI and auscultate the normal S1 and S2 and heart sounds, lub-dub, lub-dub. Once you can hear S1 and S2 with regularity, look at your watch. When the second hand reaches a number on the dial, or when the digital display reaches a round number, begin taking the apical pulse, counting the first beat you hear as one. If the pulse is regular, count the rate for 30 seconds and multiply the total by two. A normal heart rate ranges from 60 to 100 beats per minute. If the pulse is irregular or the patient takes a cardiovascular drug, count for a full 60 seconds. Also, listen for patterns of irregularity with any dysrhythmia. For example, you might notice that every third beat is skipped. Okay, Mr. Davis, your heart rate is 64, which is good. It's within normal range. Then replace the patient's and gown and bed here. linen, help him into a comfortable position, and discuss your findings if appropriate. Clean the earpieces and diaphragm of the stethoscope with an alcohol swab routinely after each use and discard the swab in an appropriate receptacle. Perform hand hygiene. As part of your follow-up, compare the patient's pulse rate and rhythm with his baseline and with the acceptable range for his age. <laughs> 